Uh, Hello, Thousand Pound Pig here, and welcome to the top 10 videos of 2017 which I made. Yes, I did make 10 videos. It's been a weird year because I haven't really made that many videos as what I usually have. I've kind of almost totally switched over to streaming. And that's partly because of these types of videos. These videos which I've always done at the end of the year show me that my videos don't do well on YouTube. They don't get a lot of views, they don't attract a lot of attention, they don't encourage people to watch until the end. They aren't clickbaity, they aren't focusing on recent games, or a fat new trend or meme, or a controversy. I've always made videos about what I wanted to, and I've always bought the games which I've wanted to as well. So unlike a lot of YouTube channels out there, I can't make videos off of like the best 10 games I've played over the past year, because I haven't bought 10. I haven't played 10 games from this year, I think. And I'm not going to call myself a games reviewer, so my opinion on the games aren't really that important. But if you have come to this channel for a bit, maybe from the streams, or you're just here for, I don't know, a bit of a watch, a bit of time to waste, or you just want to see what the channel is about, then this is a good video for you. So I'm going to be listing my videos number 10 to 1, 1 being my favourite. These are just my 10 favourite videos. If you want to watch some videos of mine, then I would suggest these ones. They are my favourites with a bunch of different reasons, so I hope you'll like watching them too. And so I hope I can kind of convince you to maybe watch one or two and enjoy that like I've enjoyed making it. We'll start with number 10. And we'll start with number 10. Fishing in Warframe. Here's a little secret. It's not just fishing. It's definitely not just fishing. This was after the Plains of Eidolon patch or update came out with Warframe. And Warframe is like, it's three or four years old or something. It's insane that they're still getting huge updates like this. So the fishing minigame was actually pretty fun where you have to get your, your javelin or whatever, you, your spear, I guess, whatever you want to call it. And you have to actually skillfully aim for the fish and hook it to catch it. I like that. But the video wasn't just about that. It was a lot of fun, don't get me wrong. But near the fishes in the plains of Ireland, a monster seems to come out at night. And I didn't know about that. But the people who I did play with oh, did. And they were much higher levels than me. So, you know, they kicked his ass. I tried to help out, but it killed me very easily. So honestly, for quite a bit of length in that video, I was just dead. And I was watching them kind of being a fangirl on the side. Just go, 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 you can do it, guys. Because it was a monumental achievement. Usually you have four high-level Warframes fighting this one boss, but they only had like two or... One and a half. It was great to see some friends do that and I'm sure it was memorable for them for actually completing the objective but I found it quite a memorable video because of its uniqueness compared to a lot of compared to just fishing in Warframe. Oh damn! I'm down. Number nine would be the Burn Van video which is all about culture in a walking simulator type of game. It's basically where a, a little city was made with crappy graphics, honestly. But a lot of attention was given to the game's lighting and sound effects. So it made this city feel or feel and sound real. And I think that's really important. But they also focus on the culture of a walking sim, where you're in some kind of alien planet walking through this little city. You don't know much about it, except you have two blue hands for some reason. You find all these other aliens, you find their bars, you find certain areas, you find people in the slums, in the sewers and crap, and you, you kind of get a, a you kind of get a sense of belonging in that place. With a good open world game, you feel like you belong there. You don't feel like it's a game. You feel not entirely immersed, but it, you, it feels realistic, like they've thought of a lot of different things. And you can spend a lot of time going through that detail. Those are the kind of games I really like, but it's pretty hard to find them, honestly. So I was pretty glad to find that game and make a video of it. Number eight would be a Sir You Are Being Hunted video, the second episode more specifically. It's it's a stealth game where you're hunted by robots and a stealth game on like a, a lot of, a f think of English farmland, some castles every now and then, a lot of forests, a lot of plains, but it's a stealth game against AI robots. You would think that would be kind of easy or really, really hard. It's honestly quite hard and... I think I had some of the best moments I've had in a game in this video. Look, I, I really like stealth games and when you can get that moment where you're hiding from these robots, whatever, beasts, whatever, it's not just in this game which it can happen, and you have the whole Lord of the Rings moment when you're hiding from the ring wraith underneath a tree stump or behind a rock or something and you know they're just on the other side of you, they're breathing down your neck almost, and they don't spot you. That's cool. That's a lot of fun. That's a good stealth game to me. But I'm honestly quite surprised that this game gets overlooked because it's a great stealth game. Next is a Don't Start video because I'm still playing that 
great game. And I've been jumping through different characters, kind of trying out a bit of each. And I've tried a bit of WX, where he's a robot where once he gets electrocuted, he has a lot of power. He can move faster, he has light which is always around him, and he does more damage. So I was playing with Mikazi and Vic, and they were telling me that they were going to do something to me, and I didn't really understand until they was said that they were going to electrocute me. I was like... Okay, I knew I would get some powers, but I didn't think it would be that effective. And so as soon as it happened, I just had a lot of fun. And you know, they were commenting that I was a little child or something. Up to you. You watch and you let me know. I love Don't Starve and I'm glad I could put a video up here about it. And number six is another one of those hidden gem type of videos. So hidden that it's not even on Steam. A lot of game sites don't sell it because it's too risky for them. It's called Hatred. I love that game. It was honestly really good. You could say that mowing down civilians, you know, it doesn't really sound fun and I got agreed just by the sound of it, but it was a good game. Like it had physics, it had lighting, it had a unique art style. A pretty unique story, of course. And it was just a lot of fun and I'm glad I made a video about it because I called it the hate the real hatred of hatred and that hatred is that people want to jump on the bandwagon against it because it's not mainstream. You're shooting civilians instead instead of zombies. You're shooting up shops and villages and restaurants. And there's blood and things. I mean I maybe yeah, keep this away from teenagers, just really young people, but this was a really well made game and a lot of people are just ignoring it because they want to jump on that bandwagon and assume that it's a bad game because of its content, because of its theme. Number 5 is an Overwatch video because I still play it. I play a lot of Widowmaker and Tracer lately, but this is my Reinhardt Mind Games video which I really like Reinhardt, it's my favourite tank and a lot of people, I mean they say what's a good tank to play or what's a good thing to do when you're a tank and I always refer back to this. Reinhardt video. Nobody ever watches it, they just say and I tell them to watch this video so they can really understand because it's hard to really describe the mind games a, ha a Reinhardt has to do against an opposing Reinhardt to try and get the other Reinhardt's shield down, get them damaged and win the game for your team and it's it's so important for a Reinhardt to beat the other Reinhardt. Almost like a Widow versus another Widow. I like that those kind of mind games as a Reinhardt. Don't like it as a Widow so much because you can get lucky. <laughs> Come on, car! Get him! Oh, you gotta be kidding me! But the whole Reinhardt mind games—it's uh, it's definitely a, a different style of playing Overwatch, and I highly suggest people watch it and and maybe learn a bit about Overwatch. It also had one of my best ultimates I've done in that game, so I'm pretty lucky that that was recorded at the time. Okay, okay, whatever. Now, fourth place is a Heart of the Storm video. I played that a lot this year, uh, quite a lot, and um, I ended up rage quitting it because it's a freaking MOBA. I, I was surprised I liked uh, isometric MOBA for a while. But in here I'm playing with Warbane in probably one of the most unique characters I've seen in a MOBA or in a game in general. We were playing as Cho'Gal, the two-headed ogre, when one person could control the feet and the physical attacks and the other person could just sit back, relax, place down wards and use his magic abilities. I was dependent on Warbane for the movement and the safety while he was kind of dependent on me for the magical abilities and a lot of the damage. It was great fun with a really unique character. If anyone has Cho'Gal or a friend who has Cho'Gal, hook up, seriously, and just play this game. Even if you're new to this game, it's a lot of fun. You'd be missing out if you don't. You gotta at least try it. Watch the video to see what I'm talking about. It was a lot of fun. Third place was a Hitman video because it was just a great game and it had a lot of special videos. Great series, I think, where I tried to do something unique for every single Hitman level. But for this one, it's probably my first one on the Paris level because I think I like that the most. Either that or Sapienza, so I had to choose one of those as well because I like both of those videos. I did something really unique in Sapienza as well. But in Paris, it just felt more like Hitman. I did it all in one life. I did it from the start to the finish and it all went seamlessly. I didn't even stop recording, didn't even have to edit it like much at all. It was just a good feeling. It was just stop, put that up in Vegas, maybe do something with the sound and upload it. It was just a great time and Hitman is a great game and I think this level and I think the way I played this level really shows how Hitman can be played or at least the, the Hitman which I think you're supposed to play. There's, there's a lot of freedom in that game but I just felt really good at the game and I'm not good at a lot of games. I, I wouldn't say I'm great at Hitman but I did the research and I completed it all in one life so I think it was a pretty fun video to make and watch. Second place was the Ghost Recon Wildlands pre-order warning video. I made this back in February after I tried the free weekend 
And the whole thing with Ubisoft is that they make really good trailers and they kind of tease a lot about the game, but they don't reveal a lot. They made they made Rainbow Six Siege and just look at the trailers of that game. And the trailers look amazing. Then when the game came out, it wasn't really it wasn't really that similar to the trailers. And the whole thing with Ubisoft is that um, people need to stop buying into their trailers and just think that the game's going to be a lot like that. And they buy the game based off of that. There's a lot of dumb consumers out there, I'll just say that. So this video was kind of a warning where I really like this game, but I didn't want people to pre-order it. I didn't pre-order it. I didn't buy it at all. I bought it like a, maybe three months ago, October or something, and I played it. I bought it after it had two more free weekends because I wanted to be sure that I would enjoy it. Because it was an expensive game and it came out this year and I'm surprised my computer handled it. Like it doesn't have one loading screen in it. It's amazing. It was one of my favorite games of the year. I found that it has a lot of depth but not so much in the gunplay which I don't really like about those games. I played The Division as well this year and finished it on stream but I like Wildlands more. There's a certain infrastructure the game has and Ubisoft really love to focus on that in their games. They focus on a lot of the realism which I love to see. And in the video I made of it, I got to explore a lot, a lot more, like if I made a video of the time I spent playing through the game from start to finish and finishing the story of it, of course, I don't think it would have been nearly as good as this video, which I made. And I made this video just in a weekend. I mean, it was a lot of work. I wanted to get a lot of different footage for it because it was a warning video. I think it was pretty important. And I really enjoyed the video. And this follows up to my favorite video of 2017, which was of The Division, the Trash and Little Stories video. Which, in that video, I say that the game is a beautiful mess, not just with the graphics and the detail of it, but the infrastructure as well. And this is really my favorite video of the year because I like focusing on these types of things in the game where, you know, you know the main objective of the division. It's, you could say that the story is to try and find whoever caused this virus or to take out all the gangs, to shoot everything, to get really good gear. And it's not about that. I don't like focusing on those main things with the games in that. In these videos, I, I always want to try and show someone a different side of the games. Kind of not so much teach someone, just kind of bring it into light, which a lot of people don't do in their videos. So I talked about the trash and little stories as in almost everywhere you look in Division, there's always a little story, such as a car with certain doors open, a car which has crashed into another, just a civilian just sitting down next underneath the train line obviously cold and starving, a dog walking by just barks at anyone who walks by him, a gang in a specific area just outside of a coffee shop which they're looting, or a bunch of trash bags piled up outside their houses. You can go into detail about every little thing there, like why did they crash, why is that dog barking, why hasn't the trash been getting collected. And I just found that The Division has a lot of detail. And if The Division really taught me something, it's that Ubisoft really, they really gave a lot of crap about the realism of their games. The authenticity, the feeling of you being immersed into the game, but also feeling that the place which you're in actually makes sense. Like, The Division isn't just a city with cars and buildings to go into and everything. You can sometimes see basketball courts, parks, car crashes, certain buildings which you can go into, coffee shops on certain corners, which makes sense in real life. Not every corner. Just that planning and infrastructure of the game, it's really, it's really interesting to me. And again, it's that side of the game which I really like, the, the hidden side, you can say. The side of which a lot of people don't talk about. Maybe I could focus more on that in the next year. And I might do that because that video was a lot of fun, but it's, it's up to you guys. Uh, I, I was going to say, you know, vote this video up or down or whatever, but I've, I've given up with that. I can't really rely on feedback. Comments, thumbs up, thumbs down, do whatever. If you respond, you post a comment or whatever, that would be cool. And I'll reply to it, but yeah, I'm not going to ask for anything. <laughs> I've given up. I don't know if I will make videos next year. I hope I will. It depends if I can really find the fun in it. Like, it's kind of the problem with streaming is that it's so much easier to get feedback. Like, if I'm doing, if I'm doing something wrong, then somebody is usually pops up on stream and actually tells you. If you're doing something right on stream, someone usually pops up on stream and tells you that, either with a follow button or a subscribe or whatever. There's just a lot more feedback, and I got into making videos because it was fun and because I wanted the feedback. Back when I started making videos, it was for uni to try and make videos faster and be more comfortable with editing. I've done that. I've now graduated uni. I now work in the industry part-time. But I still want to make videos about... And I like helping people, and I hope these videos have kind of shown that I don't want just I don't I don't want to make videos about something which is funny. 
or something which is sad or just depressing or scary. I don't want to be responsible for those types of emotions and that kind of pressure to always deliver on that. I want to show something else with games, not just in games, you know. I don't know, the sky's the limit really. I don't know what I'm going to do in 2018, but it's going to be a little bit different, I hope. You got any suggestions based off these videos, something you might have noticed which I haven't, or something which you think I'd be good at? I'm always interested in hearing that. But in 2018, I will be streaming once again a lot. Twitch and YouTube and experimenting with games and trying new things. So I don't know when the next video will be out or what it will be even about. Thank you for watching. It means a lot. Even if you don't want to say much, if you're just one of those people who just watches videos and doesn't comment, that's fine. You know, I do that quite a lot as well. But it means a lot. So thank you for you know, spending the time in your day to support this video, support the effort.